this happened, but somehow we are less than three months away from my biggest race of the year. So it's probably time that we start training. Don't you guys think so? So you're gonna come with me on one of my long training runs for the Broken Arrow Sky Race. Let's go to the mountains, come on. It's looking a little snowier than I hoped for. Made it to the trailhead. Grady's scoping it out up there. I don't know if you can tell, it's gonna be a little windy today. Pack shorts, pants might be the option. Sandals is not appropriate footwear, so let's get changed. Don't I wish I could actually change that fast? In reality, it was like 10 minutes and a lot of acro yoga in the backseat of the car. So, good luck. Mwah. He's going for the FKT, ladies and gentlemen. There he goes. All the way up there. All right, let's pack my vest. I have a system set up here. So one of these is water and one of these has electrolytes in it. I use scratch. So those go in the top smaller compartments here. Yeah. Have these little bands so they stay still. Oops, that's not the one. Cool, then I have these little side pouches here and that's where I'm gonna put my spring. I have two spring energy gels as you can see there. Got one as 100 calories and one is 180. And these fit really nicely in my little side pockets. Then I have my scratch matcha energy chews. Those are gonna go over here. Help keep the water also not from bouncing too much. And then last but not least, when I need a little kick energy boost, I got my maple dude. It is just, it's maple syrup and it's gonna, it's gonna give me exactly what I want. Just a little woo, cause I need more of that. I'm actually gonna put that in my pants, I think. Cause I have some extra room in there because my phone, it's going in this front pocket too. And that way, nothing really bounces around. We're in the mountains, things get a little chilly here, so I have an extra jacket. Oh yeah, so underneath this jacket, I have arm sleeves and just a tank top um, in case it does get a little bit warmer. Not sure, it's just super windy, but I'm gonna put my extra long sleeve shirt just in my back here, just in case. And then my arm sleeves do have these little gloves on them, but my hands get so cold that I'm going to bring an extra pair of gloves too, just in case. Here's the rest of the outfit. I got my Lululemon shorts on. They have nice pockets here. Got a little bit longer ones because it's slightly chilly. This is my option of not wearing pants. I have my high compression socks and shorts, so it's almost pants, but. And then I have my VJ's Max shoes on, super grippy. Um, this is the longest run I'm gonna be taking them on, so I'm really excited for that. Got my Spartan jacket. It's thin, but it's pretty insulated, which is great. Tracksmith gloves keep my hands warm. Uh, my arm sleeves are from Rabbit, Lululemon tank top, and that's it. Oh, and my vest is from Solomon. While I get a little bit of a warm up in here first, I'll tell you about the trails. The course that Grady just went out on is about 19 miles and it has, ooh, I wanna say like 4,000 something feet of elevation gain, but it's like an X. So you go up, touch the peak, down, touch the peak, and you go all four corners of Pleasant Mountain right here that I'm about to embark on. Uh, for me today, there is an FKT route, but I'm not really that close to it. The girl's pretty fast on there. So we're not gonna go for it today, but um, I am gonna go up and down. I'm gonna at least aim for three. A couple weeks ago, we did two, which was about nine miles, half of it. So I'm hoping for three peaks today. So we'll see what happens. Broken Arrow, the race we're doing in June out in Tahoe is 52K. And so we definitely need to start ramping up. So I really should be going for the longer mileage here today. The nice thing is, is this trail is gonna be super technical. All the trails in the Northeast are very, very technical. Lots of rocks, lots of roots. Luckily, Broken Arrow, not as technical. So I'm not looking so much to get in mileage. I'm really looking more for time on feet and hours spent out on the trails. I just passed somebody here who said that they came back down the trail to get their micro spikes, which means it's really icy at the top. I'm hoping not because I just have my shoes on and I don't really wanna run on ice today. So here we go. So as you can see here, there's the four trails. We're starting out on Bold Peak over here. Well, this is gonna be really interesting to come down. I don't know if you can tell how steep that is, but when I said it was technical, I meant it. <laughs> I already had to shed the jacket. Well, I have it attached on my back here, but I'm like 0.6 in. And I had like three people tell me that 
it's impassable up here without crampons. So like the micro spikes. So I guess we'll find out if they're just fair weather people or if this is uh, gonna be a mission fail. I guess we'll find out. Okay, so I went around the corner and look at all the snow. That right there, totally all ice. So we're gonna try and stick to the dry stuff, but that is the trail. Uh, okay, here we go. I'm not turning around at this point. We just gotta go. Because, also, there is a chance that Broken Arrow is gonna have snow. Some years they do, especially at the higher points, so, you know, it's not like I haven't been running on snow all year, but, or all winter, but this is why we wear gloves, so we can grab onto the trees. Trees are our best friend in these conditions. Here we go. Yep. We're gonna have to go off trail. We're entering like dangerous territory. I don't know if you can see. This is super steep right here. This has got to be almost 35 degree angle and it's just sheer ice. I don't think I'm going to be able to come down this way. I honestly don't think I would make it down. So it's getting a little bit better as we get up a little bit higher where there's more sun, but I'm going to have to figure out another way down. Made it to a little bit on the peak. Look at that view. Definitely a lot less icy in this area. So that's very nice to see. main summit right there so for that route with all four like the x you have to tap that summit each time and then go back down and then come back up so um if i go that way those are two routes that i did last time and i know those ones so i think i'm gonna end on going down the one that i've done a couple times and then i'm actually just gonna jog run whatever the two-ish miles back to the car on the road because that first route i came up i, I don't want to go down it it's just way too icy so i think there's a route back here great said it's like a fire-ish road so i don't know if it's gonna be better or worse i'm gonna go down and back up here for that one go down ledges and then hopefully make it back to the car and i think that should suffice for a great day all right, so that's the one I just came up, up to the summit, and now we are going down Fire Warden's Road. I just passed somebody, he said, as you can see, it is a little icy, but this ice is like slushy and a little bit more grippy. He said he didn't wear crampons coming up. He had poles with him though. But he said last week he did that ledges trail, the one I want to end on, and there was no ice on it. So hopefully up and down this one, and then I will be snow and ice free, and have a nice easy finish here but i gotta make it up and down this first so i had to make my own trail that's the trail over there it is all ice so i am just off the side of the trail definitely a little blazing of a trail but it is not slippery like look at that it's just all ice i'm really hoping that some of this ice melts as i get a little bit further down so uh stay tuned here we go. Number two. Tag it. I didn't, I didn't go all the way down that last one. It's just, it's too icy and I didn't want to, honestly. Mentally, it's hard trying to trudge down that ice and just like be hyper aware of every single step that you're gonna take and like trying to go back and forth across. So I'm gonna go down ledges. Hopefully there's no ice and run the road back and be done for the day. I think I should probably get it in around 10 miles. But first, look at this view. I don't know, can you see? If you see that white over there, that is Mount Washington. That is the tallest mountain on the East Coast. It's like 6,300 feet. It's covered in snow. Dang, awesome. What a different universe I am in now on the other side of the mountain. Look at this, this is dry. This is like the Sahara out here. So I said I was going to go down Ledges Trail, but I changed my mind again because it's nice and runnable over here. I'm just going to go out about a mile on this flatter section, come back, then go down Ledges so that I can get my 10 miles in. Look at this. Nice. How's it going? I have never been more excited to see road. Whew. That luckily was not snowy, but just a little wet and sloppy coming down, not too bad. But now we have a mile and a half on the road. We'll be done. Oh no, poor Grady. Trigger warning as blood, he fell. 
So we found him. Oh my God, 10 miles on the dot. Great training run. We were at, it was like three and a half hours. So it was a long day out there. I am tired. I'm gonna go get some food. But more importantly, I really need to get my stuff together so that I can be a little bit more prepared come Broken Arrow in less than three months. So one of the workouts I've been doing is this hill strength workout right over here. Check it out next by yours truly. So I really need to start, uh, what's the saying? Practicing what I preach and getting on those workouts and getting on a couple more long runs. I'll see you guys out there.